السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. You hear me well? So, so alhamdulillah today I have no moderator. <laughs> so uh, I have time. I have all the time uh, to develop whatever I want, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so as you see, uh, there is a little change in the program. I have again the honor to start uh, today. Well, um, my presentation today is actually uh, the topic uh, is based on research that I, I have conducted. Uh, and actually, the, the overall, uh, I have two researches or two research articles that uh, are addressing this overall topic. So, about Shatibi and about uh, his categorization of human behavior, etc. One uh, of the, re the research articles is inspired, so it's inspired by the categorization of Imam Shatibi. And the second is a reply on Imam Shatibi, a critical, uh, a critical uh, reply on Imam Shatibi about this categorization. So it's, it can be, it can seem uh, paradoxical. On one hand, uh, there is a, an inspiration; on the other hand, there is a reply. But um, I think, like we, we saw yesterday, Shatibi was sometimes. Uh, very influenced by the Ash'ari approach, and that's why sometimes regarding fitra and regarding uh, human behavior, he had um, he, he was sticking often to this to this approach. Now, I was hes hesitating about which of the two papers to present, uh, and and actually I I, I I I selected the first one, which is an inspiration, because. Uh, I was hesitating because the second one, actually, from the second one, I learned more than from the from the first one. From the you know critical engagement with Imam Shatibi, I learned much more than from just you know being inspired from from some of his categories. But anyhow, I will try to present the first one, which will be um, a very big challenge because uh, the paper is full of uh, topologies and categories and subcategories, etc. So I, I was very hesitating because I, I did not know how to present all of these abstract and complex you know, classifications. But I tried to make schemes and, uh, and I, I hope I would uh, be able to, uh, to present some of, uh, of, uh, of the, the works of Limam Shatib and some of the, the papers that, uh, that I have been working on. Now I will... We, we are already late, so I will skip the introduction and I will go straight away to um, the, the, the topic or to the, to the matter that is universal objectives and revealed objectives and the categories of human behavior. Like I said, which is inspired by Imam Shatibi, but um, it's also in critical engagement. So, and it's also um, inspired by a lot of other scholars, which I will not quote because the, the time does not allow it. Uh, too. But uh, some of the terminologies, like for example the terminology of uh, universal objective and revealed objective, this was not used by Shatibi in this categorization, but this is something that we can find in Islamic theology uh, uh, in general. Now, first of all, the universal objective and the revealed, obje uh, the revealed objectives. So, the universal Will and objectives, yes, the universal uh, and the revealed will, al irada al taqwiniya. What we mean by this is that Allah subhanahu wa taala, so in his in his creation, everything in the in the creation, whether it is the created part or whether it, is, whether it is the part that is related to the human behavior relates to the, uni to the universal will. So it's willed by Allah. It's from his will. Even the bad, even the, what we can uh, see as evil, everything is inscoped 
by what is called the revealed, or the, excuse me, the, the, universal, the universal will. So this is called also by some theologians, al-mashi'ah. Al-mashi'ah is so uh, the revealed, uh, the universal will only, while al-irada is, uh, is, is, is from, for some theologians, uh, the revealed will. So what we mean by this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established in universe without making it depending from a revealed injunc injunction. This is the universal will. And some parts, like we will see in the shim, some parts of this universal will are totally beyond human choice and they cannot defect. For example, the fact that, you know, universe exists and is regulated by a defined, a well-defined, you know, law. The fact that you, you are from a certain lineage or the fact that you have certain uh, physical characteristics or even physical, um, uh, how do you say it? Physical um, mis, uh, misformation, etc. All of this is from the universal will, and it's totally beyond human choice, and it cannot defect. And here, in this universal will, we have, of course, good, and we have evil. And the good, like you see in the shim, the good relates to the universal objectives. And the evil does not relate to the universal objective, but is from the universal will. Well, why? Because God, everything behind his creation and behind you know, the universal will, the objective behind it is the good. So the universal objective, uh, the good r relates to universal objectives, while the evil does not because the evil behind this universal will is not the objective behind it, is not wanted. But what is wanted is the good behind this evil. And we have also a category that is universal will with a relative choice. Uh, so human being has a relative choice in this universal will. For example, the fact that one part of the universal will is that God wants through his universal will, that you, you, um, you feed yourself, that you, uh, and, and there is a an universal, you know, there is an, a natural stimuli, stimuli for this, you know, to, to keep your health intact. Uh, the fact that, you know, the, the parents take care of their children, this is also part of the universal will, which is stimulated by natural stimuli, etc. But there is a relative choice because a human being may choose you know, to oppose to this universal will by, for example, not eating, uh, or by, for example, uh, not taking care uh, any, any more uh, uh, um, to, to his children, etc., etc. And behind this also there is good and there is evil. And again, the good only relates to the universal objective, while the evil uh, does not Relate only it relates to the universal will, but not to the universal objectives. And then, of course, we have the and you know one important thing is here is that you know um, the most of the necessary human needs in order to uh, accomplish the mission for which he was created were are uh, stimulated by the universal will and not by the revealed will. So most parts, most elements that are essential for the perf uh, performance of human, uh, uh, of, of his creation, on, uh, of, of his, the purpose of his creation on Earth are emanating and are stimulated by the, uni by the universal will and not by the revealed will. And that's why uh, uh, Shatibi, he says that he says that those things, 
that are related to the universal will, so that are stimulated by the universal will, are not, are not, um, uh, are not the, um, uh, or are delegate are not delegated, or are they, we, we, they are not relied on through the universe to the, uh, the the revealed will, but the 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 here the, uh, it's they they relate to the universal will, and he says that's why uh, those things in Islam are not uh, obligatory or are not forbidden. So there is no uh, um, there is no uh, final or there is no injunction, there is no divine injunction that is related to those things that are stimulated by the natural stimuli, so by the universal will. Why? Because they are already guaranteed by so the natural stimuli. This is why there is no injunction for them in revelation. But Shatibi says most of the, those things are mubah, so are just authorized eating and drinking, you know, and watching nature and, you know, uh, intercourse, and he gives a lot of examples. Uh, doing, you know, tijara, doing business, etc. Most of, our, of these things are not, there is no, uh, um, there is no uh, uh, injunction for them, but they are authorized, or in the best cases, they are just recommended. And this is why Shatibi, when talking about al mubah he says, that, you know, mubah, what is halal or what is authorized, can almost never be authorized only bil juz, which means only looking at the thing that is authorized from a partial angle, but not bil kul, not globally. Globally, nothing actually in Islam, or almost nothing, says Shatibi, is authorized. Food, for example, eating, it's authorized, mubah, but biljuz. It means looking for me, like for example, now in this moment, I, if I choose to drink or not to drink, there is, it's, it's the same, it's mubah for me to drink. But imagine that I, uh, I, 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 I quit or I stop drinking for, I don't know, two days, and I'm almost dying. Then it's for me, it's, it becomes obligatory to drink, for example. So globally, it's, Drinking is obligatory because without drinking you cannot preserve your life. But so it's only uh, in, in Islam the most of the things that are halal are only halal, like says Shatibi, only halal. Looking at the things you know from a partial angle, not globally. So, like you have understood, the revealed will. So the revealed will is the revealed will is only came only, you know, to, uh, you know, the universal will, like I said, the essential things that are needed for human being to perform his mission on earth are guaranteed by the universal will and by the natural stimuli, etc. So, the universal will came only for one reason, and that is to uh, guarantee that this universal will is realized. So the revealed will, the revelation, is only a compl uh, complementary to nature. Um, for example, even you know, even th th those things that you will think that they are most far away from from the from the from the, from the universal will, like for example, belief in Allah and even belief in the hereafter, etc. Those things are are those things actually are already there in the universal will, in the fitra. You already believe in God. And that's why a lot of scholars like Ibn, Ibn al-Qayyim and Ibn Taymiyyah and others, and actually the, it's in, even in the hadith, says that, they say that if the fitra would have been left like it is without obstructions from the reality, it would have, you know, lead the human being to the, the, the purpose of his creation without any problem. And of course, this is based on texts. So the revealed will here, for example, the case of Iman, why is the revealed will there? Because, you know, some natural stimuli within human being, like we will see later, are not, 
لا لا ترد على محلها بدون منازع لك ساج الشاطبي لا ترد على محلها دون منازع it means that it's not uh, leading to its objective without being conflicted by other natural stimuli for example belief in Allah it's something that's already in the fitra but why revelation came because some natural elements that which stimulate you to you know, to be faithful to your fitra and to the universal will are conflicted by other natural stimuli that will, you know, that will uh, need from you to make, to harmonize between them. You need to harmonize between them. And this, what, th that, that, that is a task of revelation. The task of revelation is to enable you to harmonize between all of your, those stimuli or stimuli that are there to realize the revealed will. And we may go in, in, in detail more later, later on. So divine will and objectives and human behavior, like you have understood, we will use the, the term universal will in this presentation to refer to the natural stimuli that motivates human action to behavior that complies with the divine universal objective. This is what we mean by, and of course you have, I, I have uh, give you the, you know, this, uh, the slides, huh? you have it, huh? And we'll use the term revealed will to refer to, to the religious stimuli that motivates human action to behavior that complies with the divine revealed and universal objective. This is the role of revelation. And then bad human behavior is a part of the universal will, but is not motivated by the universal will, like you understood. So, you know, Bad human, human behavior is part of the universal will because, you know, everything falls under the universal will. But it's not stimulated by the universal will. But it's stimulated by the fact that this universal stimuli were not managed as they should be. And so what happened that created a disorder uh, uh, and this disorder, you know, if you don't manage this natural stimuli to harmonize them, a disorder in the natural stimuli is created, which end up in the transgression of both, uh, both divine wills, religious and, uh, and uh, revealed and universal. Now, the categories of human behavior with regards to its motivator, like I said, this is partially inspired by uh, works of Imam Shatibi, with of course a, a critical uh, engagement like we may see later. So we have categorized human behavior with regard to its motivator to, into three categories. We have human behavior motivated by the universal will, so by the natural stimuli. We have human behavior motivated by the revealed will, by the religious stimuli, and we have human behavior motivated by the disorder of the natural uh, stimuli. I said that, you know, actually the, the natural stimuli are supposed to lead us, you know, to, the, um, to be in harmony with the universal will and to, with the universal objectives. But if we don't manage, because some natural stimuli, like we will see later, are you know, leading you to the universal will and universal objectives without any, any, or without any, strong, um, without any strong resistance from other natural stimuli. But, but some natural stimuli are conflicted by other natural stimuli. And if this conflict is not harmonized, then uh, there, there will be a disorder in the natural stimuli. One natural stimuli may yatra, may transgress, you know, and may go out of its uh, limits, and may, you know, um, uh, there, there may be an, a disorder created between the natural stimuli. <laughs> yes, we will give an example later. So we have three categories uh, of stimuli, like you see here. So we have human behavior and um, we have 
human, so we have three categories. Human, uh, mo human behavior motivated by the universal will, so by the natural stimuli. And you have human behavior, and th this human behavior uh, motivated by the, by the universal will, will, will lead to the universal objectives. And this uh, behavior, human behavior motivated by the universal will is motivated by the biological fitra, you know, the, the biological nature, the nature of your, you know, uh, the, the, your physical nature, by the spiritual fitra, you know, the spiritual fitra, the, the essence of the human being that is, you know, aspiring to the universal objective, your fitra is aspiring to worship God, to, uh, you know, is aspiring to, to, to justice, is aspiring to absolute justice, to absolute freedom, to absolute beauty, to absolute happiness, etc., etc. So this is the, the, your spiritual fitra, also absolute knowledge, etc. And then there is the construction of both so if this bi biological fitra stays, you know, um, stays uh, um, uh, uh, healthy, and the spiritual fitra also, there is, you know, a construction of both, which is called the nafs. A nafs is a construction of the physical and the spiritual dimension of human being. This, you know, this the the marriage of the two. This is the construction of both, and this also eventually will uh, create a kind of Fitra, that is a construction of both, and that will lead also to the universal objective. And of course, we have supportive incentives and, and extrinsic motivations. So this fitra, there is a, there is a dialectic relationship between those three uh, dimensions of the fitra and the, 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 what we can call, what is called in psychology, extrinsic motivations. So we have the education, we have the law, we have society, we have also inherent factors, experimental elements, all of those elements will, will, will interact, you know, if they, you know, there is an interaction because your, your fitra, your biological fitra and spiritual fitra and the construction of both is, you know, ending in a creation of a certain reality on the a certain education, you know, education and, um, education and and the law and the society etc big part of it is emanating from your fitra from you know your those human aspirations that are already innate in him and this is why by the way i did not categorize when i had the categories of human behavior i had only three categories either motivated by the natural stimuli or the religious stimuli or the disorder of of the natural stimuli, I have only three categories. Why did not talk? Why did not uh, talk about? Why did I, did I not talk about the the educational stimuli, stimuli, or the legal stimuli, or the social stimuli, or the inherited, you know, stimuli, or the experimental stimuli? I did not not talk about both uh, about those because at the end of the day, those are nothing nothing but the results of the fitra or a result of the distortion of the fitra. No, I'm, I'm talking about the, 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 the construction and the inner nature of, the, of, the, of your biological reality. The, yeah, I mean, this is the human body. But then the spiritual fitra, this is, you know, the, 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 the ruh, you know, the spirit. And then the, the nafs is the construction of both. Again, why did, not, did I, in my categorization of the, 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 the motivation or the the stimuli that motivates human action. Why did I not talk about legal uh, stimuli and social stimuli and inherited stimuli, etc.? Because, like I said, actually the human being, in his legal, in the legal system that he created, or in the, in the education, uh, educational system that he created, etc., etc., this is a result of either his fitra, you know, or either a distortion of it. There is no, you know, the human. Human by himself, he cannot. He has the choice between sticking to his fitra or between contradicting his fitra. There is no third choice, actually. Everything that he's doing, you know, even the, the things that that looks like 
most far away from what we can consider as fitter or something, like for example the traffic, uh, the traffic, uh, how do you say it? Uh, the, the, the traffic rules, for example. Those are, are stimulated by, 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 the, by what's already in the human being in terms of, you know, uh, aspiration for maybe justice or for maybe preserving his life or for maybe preserving his, you know, his, uh, his uh, properties, etc., etc. So this is why I did not talk about those other stimuli because those other stimuli are constructed by the human being from his fitra or from the distortion of it. And I did not categorize them, that's, that's why I did not categorize them uh, differently. Now, of course, like you see, the revealed objectives, <coughs> the revealed objectives like you see in the shim, are under the universal objectives. Because at the end of the day, the purpose of the revealed objectives is to realize the universal objectives. Like I said, everything which uh, which revelation came with is already there in human being. You know, religion came with asking you to believe in God, but you already believe in God. You already believe in Him. So it's only there for what? To stimulate or to vitalize this belief, to make sure that, you know, this belief that's already in you is not conflicted by something else, you know, by your aspiration for, you know, for possession or by, our, by other aspirations, by other stim, natural stimuli, there is no conflict and there is harmony between them. So religion came only you know, to support uh, nature and to support, or, so revealed objectives are there to help realize the universal objectives. So then the second category is the, uh, is the um, behavior motivated by the revealed will and so we have elements and revelations supporting the biological fitra elements supporting the spiritual fitra, elements supporting the healthy construction of both spiritual and biological. And then we have the, se the third category that is human cho choice to transgress both wills. And here, of course, we have also supportive incentives and ex extrinsic motivation. And uh, these, comes, th these are emanating from the disorder of the natural stimuli, like I said before. So the disorder of the natural stimuli ends up in, you know, the disorder of a, a kind of disorder in the educational system that is created by human beings, the legal system, the social, etc. And like you see, there is a dialectic relation between the two. So you don't manage well your, uh, your, uh, your uh, um, uh, natural stimuli so they will conflict and there will be a disorder and this disorder will end up in you know uh, creating an educational and legal and social uh, uh, and reality etc that is against the fitra and this reality that is against the fitra will come back again and will will create more disorder in your fitra and that this ends up in the human choice to tra transgress both wills uh, and God says in the Quran, he, He's talking about those who, you know, those who did not manage those stimuli and those with, from the, the, their fitra was, you know, was covered. Allah put a cover on their fitra, but it's still there. So Allah in several places said that Allah covers their ears, their eyes, and their hearts. Their fitra is covered. And uh, and, and he says here, So their fitra is still calling them to come back, but from far away. From far away, the fitra is still calling. But it's, it's covered. So everybody, everybody has this, you know, everybody uh, believes, and everybody has aspirations for justice and aspirations, etc. But some of them, you know, because of the, they, they did not, you know, they let themselves go, and they did not manage th themselves, you know, they, they, um, their fitra got covered under layers of, of covers that came from those, those you know, uh, ele ex uh, external elements. And so here the human choice to transgress both wills, again, we have in, in the human choice to transgress both wills, this falls under the universal will. When somebody kills somebody, this is the universal will, of course. 
But is this the, and in, in, the, in the, the fact that somebody kills somebody, is there good in it? Yes, there is good. Because God in his universal will, there is always good. And there is bad also. But the bad is not meant by God. And this is why it doesn't fall under the universal objective, even though uh, it falls under the universal will. For example, I give you, uh, when I kill somebody, it's evil because it's going against the universal will and the revealed will. But there is good behind it. And for example, one of the good behind it is that if I am not able to kill somebody, that means that I'm not able to choose between good and bad, and that is, that is bad. The, f the, only, the only fact that I'm able to choose between good and bad is good. So the good behind the fact that I'm able to kill, <coughs> this is what Allah wants, the good behind it is that I'm able to choose. And if I'm able to choose, that means that I'm, am I, I, am, I am responsible. I carry the amana. If I carry the amana, it means that I'm mukarram. I'm honored by Allah. And I have a higher degree than animals, etc., etc. So you can go far, away, far and say that, you know, at the end of the day, it's good. And this is what is wanted. And this is one element of the good that is wanted behind the fact that I kill somebody. But we have other elements also. So at the end of the day, it's bad because it's transgressing both wills, but it's the universal will, but not the universal objective because what is behind it, this is what the universal objective. So here we have an overall, can we keep the questions for later? I know I don't have a moderator, so I have all my time, but still. I <laughs> <laughs> um, so here, this shim, this shim is a, uh, um, this shim is a, is a um, it's, the scheme, okay. The scheme is, an, is just an, uh, 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 how do you say it? Talkhis. Uh, um, summary of all of the whole paper. But then under each of these categories, you have a lot of subdivisions. And of course, I cannot go into all of them, but I will try to go into some of them. So let's start with the first behavior. Uh, the, the first, excuse me, category of human action is the human action human behavior that is motivated by the, by the natural stimuli. And in, uh, in psychology, this, this is called instinct, or sometimes this is called drives, because it's inherent in human beings. So in, 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 in similar you know, terminology in psychology, it's instinct or drives. So, Behavior motivated by the natural stimuli. So we have behavior in compliance with, uh, with the divine universal objective, motivated by the natural stimuli, like you saw, the biological fitra, the spiritual fitra, and the construction of both biological and spiritual. This is clear. And this is what Shatibi, you know, like I said, it's partially inspired by Shatibi. So I, I, I tried to quote Shatibi uh, and and I, have the, I had a very hard time translating Shatibi because you know, Muafaqat of Shatibi is not translated, uh, only two parts, only two volumes are translated. So I had a very, really a hard time trying to translate him. So this is, anyhow, this is what he says about this category. I will not read it, you have it in front of you, so you can, you can read it. So in this category, the natural stimuli, we, ha we have two categories. The, so the, 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 the behavior motivated by the natural stimuli, we have two category, categories. The first category is the natural stimuli contained in their place without a strong natural contention. So it means this natural stimuli leads you to stick to the, uh, uh, universal, to the universal objectives without any, natural, without any strong natural contention. For example, everybody is eating. Huh? And there is no strong natural contention that will prevent you from eat. Everybody is having, you know, the, 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 the hum, humankind is still existing because everybody is reproducing. And there is no strong natural stimuli that is preventing you from reproducing, etc. And, you know, I'm talking globally, you know, not uh, individually, etc., etc. So this is the natural stimuli, of course. There is a subcategory, but uh, like I said, I will not go into, uh, uh, go into this because you have a lot of subcategories. So this is the first category. The natural stimuli contained in their place without a strong natural contention. This is what Shatibi says about 
this category, and you have it also in front of you, we'll not read it. Then the second category is the natural stimuli that are conflicted by other natural stimuli. So here we have natural stimuli that are supposed also to lead you to, the, to stick to the, to the universal objectives, <clears throat> but they are conflicted by other natural stimuli. And we, can, we, get, we gave already several examples. For example, the fact that you know, human being aspires for justice. Everybody aspires for justice. But this aspiration sometimes, it's conflicted by other natural stimuli. For example, everybody aspires also for position, possess possession. And for, you know, uh, everybody uh, aspires for you know, for taking care of himself and, you know, having, having a good uh, uh, social <coughs> position, etc. This aspiration, aspirations can conflict your aspiration for justice. So this aspiration for justice is not, you know, leading to the, to the universal objective without being conflicted by other natural stimuli. And here comes the role of revelation. So the revelation... Yeah. So here, of course, there is not only revelation, but there is also support, supportive incentives and extrinsic motivation that are inherited, that are social, that are e educational, that are legal, etc. So by you know this 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 um, as this aspirations or this natural stimuli that are conflicted by other stimuli, we have of course elements from society, from education, from the law from your, uh, uh, what you have inherited, all of these elements can help you also uh, make sure that those uh, natural stimuli that are conflicted by others, you know, will achieve their objective and will be harmonized and will be, you know, um, uh, um, yeah, harmonized with those other natural stimuli. Of course, we have those supportive incentives, like I said, because human being, Already with his fitra, he creates, he, he's aspiring for creating a legal system and social system, etc., that will, you know, harmonize uh, uh, those elements. But this is not enough. According to Islam, this is not enough. And we have a verse, you know, that says, يَكَادُ زَيْتُهَا يُضِيءُ وَلَوْ لَمْ تَمْسَسْ هُنَارِ Here it's, it's, the, 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 it's about the fitra. And the verse says that, you know, this fitra, it's, it's compared by, like, by olive oil, and this olive oil almost gives light without being touched by fire. And here the fire is revelation. So your fitra almost leads you to your objectives, leads you to the universal objectives without being touched by this, this fire that is revelation. So you already are you know, creating a social, social system and an educational system, etc., to try to harmonize your fitra. But it's not enough. The revelation says it's not enough. And this is why, this is where revelation comes into the picture. So this is where we have behavior motivated by the religious stimuli. So here to, to um, harmonize those natural stimuli that are conflicted by others, we have to have behavior that is in compliance with the divine revealed objectives. And then they get, and, and then there is a way to harmonize them. And this is, of course, through the religious stimuli. So the religious stimuli will contribute to harmonize them and will contribute, you know, to the creation also of the supportive incentives that uh, are uh, emanating from extrinsic motivation that are inherited because you will inherit it through this revelation uh, revealed you know teachings that are social you will contribute to the creation of a social system educational legal etc in the the revealed uh, uh, stimuli or the religious stimuli we have several categories also one category concerns the teaching detailing some specific means of preserving the universal objective which are not spontaneously emanating from the natural stimuli. 
So we have teachings in religion that are de detailed teachings and they are there to, um, to preserve universal object objectives that have no, uh, that there is a natural stimuli, but they are not spontaneously emanating from the natural stimuli. For example, your aspiration to God and to worship God, etc. This is also, this is already, there is already a natural stimuli. But the details of this adoration are not naturally uh, emanating from this uh, uh, natural stimuli. So there is where revelation comes with detailed teachings concerning the means of preserving the universal objectives which, which are not emanating from the natural stimuli. And so we have here uh, several examples. I gave you the example of worships, for example. Then second, we have general teachings framing human behavior as to guide it towards the universal objectives. So those teachings are not detailed. They are not detailed uh, um, elements which will create a stimuli you know, that is det detailed by revelation. But there are general teachings that will frame your behavior. And here, of course, we can have, uh, we can have stimuli that's religious or extrinsic stimuli that are realizing the universal objectives that are already there in reality. So revelation come and, you know, with this general teachings to make you adopt those elements that are already in, in reality and to use them as a stimuli, you know, to, re to, to uh, realize a uh, universal objective. So like fasting is one of the videos? Yeah, but it's, it's from the first category because it's a detailed teaching that, you know, uh, um, that concerns a mean of preserving the universal objectives and that is not spontaneously emanating from the natural stimuli. This is, uh, it's, it belongs to this, uh, this category. The second category is not something that is detailed by revelation, but it's, you know, it's a general teaching. And the general teaching is framing human behavior as to guide it to, uh, to a behavior that will, uh, or stimulate it to, behave, to a behavior that will uh, preserve a universal objective. We will give some examples later, inshallah, if you have time. Here in this category, so we have general teachings that are framing human be behavior as to guide it to, towards the universal objectives. And here we have also two categories. One category is, you know, uh, behavior that is already there in reality, and revelation will come and will uh, in scope or will, you know, uh, um, uh, will support this behavior and enhance this behavior. And behavior that's not there in reality and that is needed to, uh, uh, to, uh, to realize universal objectives, well, the, the revelation will, you know, give you the, the frame in order to develop this behavior. This is the second category. And then we have a third category. And that is ishtihad in vitalizing the stimuli in order to adhere to the specific behavior that realizes universal objectives and in uh, uh, self-determination uh, uh, theory, which is uh, 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 just a, a, a chapter in, in psychological uh, 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 of be behavior psychology, in psychology self-determination self theory. This is called internalization and integration so which means that there is a so in, in SDT so uh, self-determination uh, theory uh, it, it means that there is a behavior that without exter we, we need we need to adopt this behavior but so we need to ad adopt this behavior so as it becomes a, um, a spontaneous behavior that is stimulated from within without external pressure so we try to integrate this behavior as to become part of our, you know, natural, natural disposition. And of course, I think, I think it's very interesting when I was reading this in psychology, it's very interesting because in Islam, you know, we should, the ishtihad should, should be, you know, di directed to this. And the Prophet says, uh, Nobody of you believe until his desires becomes in harmony with 
which I came with, with that which I came with. The Prophet came with what? Religion, which is fitra, because re religion is fitra. So, which means that nobody of you will believe until, you know, his behavior is spontaneously, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, 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 in harmony with, with the fitra and emanating. So here we, we need to have ishihad in order to, you know, those things that, that we are not integrating and we are not liking spontaneously, that we are integrate them as to become, you know, in harmony with our fitra. Now the third category is behavior motivated by the disorder of the natural stimuli. And here in sociology, this is called the divine behavior. Uh, or conduct, in psychology, this is called conduct uh, disorder. But you know, we can discuss the terms because it's not completely what we mean here. So, here we have also two categories. We have uh, behavior that it's in opposition with both revealed and object, uh, um, universal and revealed objective, and we have behavior that is openly, openly contradicting, contradicting both wills. And we have behavior that is driven, it's contradicting both wills because it's driven through an interaction of a number of factors. You know, Imam Shatibi, this is what he say about the first category. Uh, you, can, you can read it. But just to win sometimes, we will try to go fast. Uh, uh, so we have also several categories here. The first categories, so <coughs> talking about the we have in, innate means to achieve the universal objective. To achieve the universal objective, we have innate means. N so natural stimuli. This natural stimuli, of course, leads normally spontaneously to the universal objective. But, but because a human being, not like animals and other elements of the creation, he has a free will, he has the ability to contradict his natural stimuli. This is why it's possible that his natural stimuli stays intact, and in that case we have behavior in compliance with both wills, or it's possible that his natural stimuli are disturbed, and then we can have behavior in opposition with both wills. So this is where, this is where opposition to the, the divine uh, uh, universal objective is possible. So, you see, you know, Shatibi says, uh, like you have seen in the first category, it's a category, you know, where you contradict, where you contradict your, your natural stimuli without any other natural stimuli that is conflicting. You see here, in this first category, it's openly, and Shatibi called this al-mujahara. Al-mujahara is to do something that is in opposition with the universal objective or with the reveal objective without, any st without anything stimulating you to this. And Shatibi says, like you see here in, uh, in what he says, this is why the Prophet ﷺ was so harsh on three people. And one of those three are al Shaykh Zani. Shaykh Zani is an old person who commits fornication. And because this old, the, the he, he's not, you know, he has not a strong, you know, uh, drift to, to transgress here uh, uh, the, the revealed objectives. But still he does it. And he sees, Shatibi sees this as a mujahara. While the second category is, you know, like a construction. It's something, you know, you, you, you did not manage this natural stimuli and this, you know, this order lead it into a system, an educational system, a social system. You inner, inherited a number of facts that are leading you almost spontaneously to the, uh, uh, to the uh, contradiction of the, the universal will. It does not mean that you are, um, you are losing your choice, huh? and it's, de it's, de it's not determinism that you are losing your choice, but you know, it's leading you to, to, de to that. So you, you don't do it, you know, uh, uh, in a, it's not uh, in a, that you do it openly. And it can be that you are leading to this, but that isn't the case where you came to a point that you did not manage your natural stimuli to the point that, you know, your fitra has just, like I said before, 
has just you know been covered by layers of and this is why the prophet says that the sins the sins they're covering you one by one it's like a point each sin is a point on your heart until your heart is covered and then you know your fitra is not calling you anymore and then it can it may be impossible to go back and this is why where the quran uh, says uh, um, that uh, uh, that, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers the hearts until you know it's not possible again to, to, to go back. And Shatibi says Al Mujahara is very, uh, very, yani, nadir, very, uh, 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 very rare. That you, you know, you are doing a sin, just you know, there is nothing. You are not stimulated by anything, you're just doing it without anything that you know is leading you. Huh? No, it's always free choice. You know, even if you are stimulated, it's free choice. But it's a construction of, you know, this disorder of the natural stimuli leads to a social construction, a system, etc., that is leading you, you know, to, to, the, to, to, this, uh, to this behavior that is in opposition. But anyhow, it's a choice. But in, in one way, it's harder, you know, to resist. While the mujahir, you know, for him, it's, there, there is not, n nothing driven, driving him. Okay, can we leave the question for later? I don't know how many time I still have. <laughs> then we can come to the example. I have five minutes and a half. Okay. So this is what Shatibi says. Now, okay. Now, the, 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 innate, the innate means to achieve the universal objective, like I said, sometimes it can be disturbed. They can be disturbed. <coughs> so, you know, like I said, the fitra is leading you, the biological fitra, spiritual fitra, the, um, um, uh, what is, the, the construction is leading you, the fitra of the nafs is leading you to the, the universal objective. Now it can be disturbed. What happened if it disturbed? Two possibilities. One possibility is that the nafs, you know, the ruh and the, the, the human being, so, seeks the human re reality seeks to restore balance from within. So it's not calling f you, you know, it's not seeking to restore balance from without, calling you to do something. It's seeking from within. And here we have the physical immune system, but actually it's not only the, the Im immune system, it's much more, you know. Uh, you know, if, if you are injured, then, you know, your body will, will heal the, you know, the injury. Uh, and uh, most of the time, uh, uh, alone, it will not call you to do something or to do a lot. For example, so we have the physical immune system, we have what is, what is called, some in psychology calls the psychological immune system, sometimes the difficulties and the hardships of life. You're, there is a kind of in psychological immune system that try to restore, you know, a complex process that try to restore all those difficulties that you get, you know, the, the harmony again. And then we can also talk, but there's a long story, we don't have time, about the spiritual immune system. So here, it's not calling you to do something, but it's, it's you know, the fitra, it's restoring balance from itself. But it's also possible <clears throat> that the nef seek to restore balance from without, it, it cannot. It's too much, you did too much. So the most, the most that the, the human being is disturbing his fitra, the most that, the, that his nefs will call him to do something. And here we have tension. A, a tension is created to, 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 to tell you, okay, do something. There is a problem. And this tension, if it's answered proper, uh, properly, then we have behavior that, is, that reduces the unbalance. Uh, the tension is proper answer, if we, or we have behavior that reduces the un, uh, unbalance and the tension is answered properly and then, you know, we can re-balance re, re, uh, uh, the thing. Or we have the tension that is not answered properly, properly and then we have behavior that is in opposition to both wills. And here, uh, I wanted, uh, did I not tr uh, translate what Shatibi says? Oh yeah, here. Here, one important thing that I wanted just to read from, from uh, Shatibi, <coughs> he, he says, <coughs> I, I will not read everything. Eh? <coughs> he says, so I, like I said, I tried to translate, I hope I was, I was uh, faithful to, to what he said in Arabic. Indeed, the necessary matters entrusted to nature, nature can be religious, r religiously recommendable or permissible or related to decency, etc. 
as understood, etc. Therefore, it's likely that one doubts on their belonging to the necessities. So, you know, uh, like we said before, religion may tell you that eating or drinking or being in nature or whatever, all of this is just good or just, you know, permissible, etc. And there he said the danger is to think that this, uh, you, or the danger is that people become, uh, will doubt that those things are necessities. They will think they are not daruriyat, they are not necessities, they are just hajiyat, etc. Uh, 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 and then he says, one may think that this is no par not part of the necessities while it is. And then he says, that's why attention was drawn on this so that the mushahid keep this in mind. So he said to the mushahid, keep in mind while doing your ishtihad that, you know, some things are not in the text and not, you know, uh, uh, recommended or not, you know, there is no uh, imperative, uh, there is no imperative um, injunction in text about this. But don't think that this, not be, this does not belong to the necessities. And, and here we can have our example of green urban planning. Um, so, so there is one fact that is proven by several studies, that is that the human being is in need, there is a fitra, in his fitra he is in need of course, you know, when I was reading those studies, we can't agree about where did this shitra come from. According to all the studies I read, you know, it comes from where, when the human being was a cueur chasseur, a gatherer, um, how do you call it, a hunter-gatherer, where he was always in nature, you know, and where the, everything depended on, his, on the nature and the cycles of day and night and the cycles of the seasons, etc. And so this is where he was constructed by this need of <clears throat> interacting with nature, etc. So we can, we can discuss about this. But anyhow, the fitra, in his fitra, the, the human being is in need to interact with nature, is in need to be in nature, in, is in need to watch nature, etc., etc. This is a, 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 natural, uh, a, a natural aspiration and a natural need in human being. And his psychological and physical and even spiritual uh, health depend on this or depend partially on this and this is proven by a lot, a lot of study in, in psychology etc and what happened is that with uh, uh, and of course in religion in religion like we said this is not th there is no uh, religious injunction that is saying you have to be in nature, you have to interact with nature, etc., etc. But what we found in text is just that nature was created for you, etc., so uh, watch it, uh, walk in it, but it's not imperative, it's just, you know, it's allowed, etc. But what happened after the Industrial uh, Revolution uh, in, the, in the beginning of the 19th century, uh, that was uh, driven by the, 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 the scientific and technological advances, uh, there is, there, there, we had the phenomena of industrialization. And the phenomena of industrialization has uh, uh, bring, brought uh, uh, the, f the, the phenomena of urban, uh, urbanization, where you know, people start to settle in, in the big cities, etc. While before that, most of the people, you know, they lived as farmers or they lived in, you know, in, in, you know, in nature, with, in forests and in, in, in big farms, etc. And their rhythm of life depended on the cycles of the natural cycles of day and night or seasons, etc. And the interaction of, with nature was, uh, was very important, etc. But everything changed with this industrialization and urbanization, etc. <clears throat> And this changed the, the, the natural rhythm of human being, what made that most of the human being, now the studies say that approximately 50% of the, of the, human, uh, of the human, uh, pop global human population is living in urban settlements, and they are expecting that in 2050 it will be more than 70%. Well, most of the human being live indoors live indoors and their life does not depend anymore on the cycle of nature and even their interaction of nature become very weak. And this brought about very problems on several levels, psychological, 
uh, physical, etc. And there was a lot of studies talking about this, talking about the lack of interaction with nature and the consequence on a lot of things, even on education, the consequence on the co cognitive consequences, the psychological con consequences, the physical, etc., etc. I, I just uh, pass you the details. And here, <coughs> this, the, the debate, there is a debate about a lot of, or there's, uh, we talk about a lot of solutions about green urban planning, green care, green education, green design, biophilic design, etc., etc. All of these things that you know <clears throat> are eventual. Maybe we have to look for solutions <clears throat> in order to, because like we saw in the shim, now the nefs cannot rest restore the balance by itself. It's calling you. There is a tension. You know, there is psycholo psychological problems, etc. It's calling you to do something to restore the. You know this. You, uh, this, uh, you, uh, this natural stimuli in order to, uh, to realize the, the universal objectives. So the green planning is one example of that. But if we go back to the Islamic thoughts, then we see, and the fiqh and the Islamic you know, production, then we see that very little attention is, is brought to this. And s uh, Islamic scholars see this as secondary thing things. Because w what Shatibi says, because become true. You know, what did Shatibi say? I'm scared that some people, you know, by seeing that, you know, there is no religious injunction for this, will think that, you know, this is just secondary and this is not, you know, a higher objective. This is what he was scared about, about and this is what happened. What happened is that scholars now saying that there is no injunction, you know, so this is secondary. And I can quote you people, Maqasid Yun, you know, big references in Maqasid al-Sharia that are saying those things, you know, green, green uh, cities, etc. I mean, it's good, it's good. Like, I mean, tahsiniyat, you know, there are luxuries or like the, what the sister called uh, um, uh, uh, em embellishments. And this is not a priority. So this is an example, you know, <coughs> about <coughs> taking it to, into account, you know, this natural stimuli and the universal objective in their whole in ishtihad and in the religion, religious ethical production, and also to build an ethical philosophy. And I think this, this, uh, what sought to be developed, is a, it's a, also a good start and a good part of um, trying to think about building an ethical uh, philosophy. Allahu a'lam wa ahkam wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.